Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to Celebration Bar Review. My name is Jackson Mummy, and uh, we're about 78 days until the bar exam, just a little under 80 days to go. It's a good period of time when we're talking about bar review. Uh, bar review hours are sort of like dog years, I think. It's uh, practically a lifetime until the actual exam coming up. So if you're watching this video at about the 80-day point, you've still got plenty of time. Many of you might be just graduating from law school at this stage of the process, and if so, congratulations. That's wonderful for you. Uh, and uh, you know, then you're going to switch around and start studying for the bar. And for the rest of you, well, you should be studying right now. Now, if you're in one of the big box bar review courses, you probably haven't even started your studies yet. Uh, but I can tell you that for um, many people, this is the optimum time to actually begin their studies. And so in today's message, what I wanted to do was to focus on some things that you might think initially are peripheral to your study, but actually enhance the quality and the value of your studies. Now, why do I talk about those particular items rather than telling you how to study a particular subject or piece of material? And the answer is actually pretty simple. As results come in across the country, as I'm recording right now, uh, the trend is very clearly towards uh, lower pass rates across every jurisdiction, uh, virtually every demographic group. We've been very fortunate at the Celebration Bar Review that our numbers have held steady and, steady and actually gone up in many situations. We're really helping a lot of people, particularly repeat bar takers, pass their exams. And one of the things I find in common with the people who pass, particularly those who are repeating, is not that they study harder or that they suddenly get smarter or they study longer hours. In fact, it's almost counterintuitive. What really seems to make the biggest difference is changing their perspective on what's going on and how they prepare and how they approach the exam itself. So what I wanted to talk about today were some things that you can do to get ready for the test uh, that are not so much built around substantive studying, uh, but really more about the broader connections in the world. Um, and so um, I hope you'll, you'll sort of take this and put it into perspective and into the overall conversation that you're having about the bar exam itself. Now, when I have talked with students who are successful versus the students who are not successful, I realize that these two groups have some things as a group of people that, that are in common. The successful people do some things that the unsuccessful people generally don't want to do. And so um, I want to give you three items that I think successful bar takers are doing that you might not necessarily expect, but I see it over and over again. So let's jump into them. The first of the three is that I really want you to have a daily exercise regimen. And you're probably saying to yourself, wait a minute, exercise? It's the guy that's talking about the bar review. What's up with that? Um, well, we're not talking about lifting bars. We're talking about lifting scores. But here's the connection. More and more research that's being done using functional MRIs and a series of other uh, tests and results uh, show that there is now a pretty well-proven connection between good cardiovascular exercise and the ability to retain information, to learn and hold attention, to reduce stress, and to reduce anxiety. And really, all of those items ought to be things that sound pretty good for you as a bar taker. If you can do some exercise, it's going to have a demonstrable effect on your ability to learn, to retain the information that you're learning, to reduce stress and reduce anxiety, and really, who wouldn't want those outcomes? Now, the way that this really needs to work based on the scientific studies that have been done is to do typically five days uh, a week of some sort of cardiovascular or just movement. And I want to be very clear that when we talk about cardiovascular, what we're talking about would be running or walking, um, you know, more than an, a slow amble, but not, uh, you know, not a power walk by any means. Uh, walking briskly inside, outside on, a, uh, on the sidewalk or inside on a treadmill would be fine. If you want to use a Stairmaster or an elliptical machine or a stationary bike, if you want to get on one of those where you, you know, do all the, the weird gadgets and you connect to the broader world and you power bike uh, cycle together, great, go for it. Those are all valuable ways to do it. If you're a swimmer, go ahead and do that. If you're a bicycle rider, do that. These are all great ideas. Um, but what we're not talking about here, very specifically for our purposes, we're not talking about weight training or circuit training. While those are really wonderful things, they don't actually give the benefit that we're looking for right here, at least with your study. So if you're a weightlifter or you like doing circuits, great, but that's not really to our point. 
The idea of what we want here is to get somewhere between 30 minutes to an hour a day uh, at about uh, 75 percent of your maximum heart rate that's ideal but if you're not even getting close to 75 percent of maximum heart rate you're still fine uh, you're still getting a lot of the benefits that we want now again I want to point out we're not looking for a weight loss zone this is really more of the cardio zone it's an aerobic zone and it's most effective when you can get into that 75 percent max heart rate now even more important than that the studies are showing that you shouldn't try to study or read or uh, multitask in the form of learning new material while you're doing it. And I know that's a little counterintuitive. The work indicates that when you start trying to multitask during this time, it actually reduces the uh, retention of the material. Um, many people, including myself for a long time, uh, would take our iPhones or our uh, iPods or whatever uh, devices we had with our music on them, uh, and we'd, uh, or we'd take a book with us, or we'd take a, an iPad and set it up on the treadmill and, and try to read, uh, whatever that might be. Well, the studies now tell us that that's not the best way to study. It actually can be counterproductive. So, uh, we don't want you doing that when you're studying for the bar. We'd like you to use your exercise time to clear your mind, uh, relax, listen to some music if you want to listen to it, but don't listen to lectures. Um, use this time to relax and to exercise. And if you want to read People Magazine, go ahead, or you know, uh, whatever, whatever floats your boat, I guess, but don't do your bar studies during that time. Now the other key to this, based on the studies that we're looking at right now, and there's a substantial amount of literature on this, is that it's best to do your exercise immediately before your study time. It's interesting. So if you're a morning student, a morning studier, get up first, go to the gym or take a walk or do your workout, take your run around the neighborhood, bike, do your swimming, whatever it might be. And then after you shower so that you can be around human beings again, sit down and do your studies as close in time to the exercise as you possibly can. The reason for this is because you're moving a lot more oxygen, oxygen yeah, you get a lot more oxygen in your brain, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the chemical synaptic responses are better. There are some chemicals that are called receptors, some are binders, and they're more energized at that point, so they work better. That's the, uh, the simple way of saying it, uh, because clearly I can't say the more complicated way. Now the faster you can get from your exercise to your study, the better off you're gonna be. Well, so I guess the question would be, is it bad to exercise in the morning and then study at night? And the answer to that is no, but you won't see the benefit quite as dramatically as if you exercise right after, uh, right, do your exercise and then do your studies right away. Do you need to exercise first thing in the morning? No, the answer is you don't have to. If you're an afternoon or an evening exerciser, that's fine. But again, try to do your studies in close in time after the exercise. And finally, how often should you do this? Well, most studies say five to six day a week habit is really optimum, uh, but do what you can. Now, if you're interested in finding out more about this connection between mind-body, there's two resources I wanna uh, suggest to you. The first is a book that's been out for a few years now that I've referred to often. The book title is Spark. It's by Dr. John Rady from Harvard. Uh, it's written pretty uh, uh, understandably for laymen. It's well written. You can pick the chapters uh, that you want based on the particular concerns that you have. He does a lot of work with learning and anxiety and the relationship to, uh, uh, to exercise. And you can really find out what happens uh, medically, chemically, physically, and uh, if you can pronounce some of those chemical names, you're much better off than I am. In any event, it's, it's really a, a, a good resource. Another resource I want to suggest to you is the book No Sweat by Dr. Michelle Seeger. Uh, I've talked about this book as well. She actually is more of a proponent of just being active, just getting up and moving, but I think she does a great job of uh, laying out that case and why we can motivate ourselves uh, from this standpoint rather than feeling like we have to or we, we're pushed into doing it. Those two books together are really well um, uh, combined to give you the benefit and show you why you should do this and why you want to motivate yourself to do it. Now, in addition to this uh, first task of aerobic conditioning, the second thing that I want to suggest to you is what I would call volunteer conditioning. Now, you might be asking, what in the world do you mean by that? Uh, well, really it's volunteering. And what I'm saying here is that you need to get perspective. This is particularly true if you've taken the bar and you've failed. It is very easy at this point to have no other uh, focus except yourself, to feel sorry for yourself, uh, to feel frustrated and angry and confused, uh, and truthfully, uh, you lose perspective pretty quickly. 
This is also true if you are taking the bar exam for the very first time. You may be so caught up in the graduating from law school, taking the bar, that you have no perspective on what's going on around you. I found that the students who are successful have some focus other than the bar exam. They have a sense of the larger world around them. Instead of becoming self-consumed and uh, becoming sort of the, the person, you know, it's all about me, Hollywood movie star, White House politician, you know the kind of people we're talking about. Those people is not what you want to be for the bar exam. You don't want to be uh, focused entirely on yourself. In any event, I would say it's not all about you. And so in order to help, my suggestion is that you spend five to 10 hours a week doing some kind of outside yourself activity. If you're in uh, legal practice, do some pro bono work. If you're not in practice, do something as simple as reading a book to a child or buying groceries or taking someone who's elderly or shut in uh, out for a walk or doing something with them. Visiting people that need some friends and visitors. Doing something that just gives you a broader sense of the world outside you. It is critically important. The more self-absorbed you become, the more self-consumed you become, the less effective your studies are. I see this over and over again. After 25 years, it's become almost axiomatic to me. The more you lose perspective, the less effective your studies will become. People don't get better results by becoming less aware of what's going on around them. So if you've got a family, how about spending time with your family? Maybe take those 10 volunteer hours and turn them into family hours. Just give yourself some perspective, some focus other than you and the bar exam. Now, the third thing that I'm going to suggest is that you spend some time in prayer or meditation. Uh, spend some quiet time alone. And quiet time really means quiet and alone. It doesn't mean in your office with the phone ringing. It doesn't mean necessarily lying in bed at 3 a.m., although I gotta be honest, sometimes that's my best prayer time. But it's time when you're actively engaged in meditation, reflection, prayer, whatever you'd like to call it. Now, we have a product that we recommend for our students called Paraliminal Recordings. These are 20 to 30 minute soundtracks that you put on, listen to with headphones, and they give you that opportunity to focus on particular uh, items uh, in your life that you want to work on. They're incredibly effective. We also recommend a product called Holosync Audio Meditation. This is just simply a wonderful soundtrack that you put on again, listen to with your headphones for 30 minutes, and it meditates you. It's a great opportunity to just get connected, to get focused, uh, to, to become clearer and calmer. The time that you take to get yourself centered, to become calm and relaxed, is really important because part of what happens is that uh, we get so frustrated, we get so frazzled, we are so multitasking these days that we really lose the ability to, to focus and lock in and really get uh, the most out of the time that we spend. In addition, I think that if you are someone who uh, has a faith life, the ability to ask that higher power in your life for guidance, comfort, skill, ability, good health, uh, focus, all of the blessings that you've received in your life, uh, to reflect on those is a wonderful thing. If you're not particularly religious, there's a paraliminal called gratitude that I think accomplishes much the same thing. The point is that you want to be grateful for where you are. And I know some of you are thinking, well, why would I be grateful? I mean, I, I failed the bar. I'm pretty unhappy. I get that. But here's the reality. If you're at the point where you're taking a bar exam, you've already had a lot of good things happen in your life. It may not feel that way today, but in reality, if you think about all the people in the world and all the crazy things that are going on around us, I think most of the world's population would switch places with you in a heartbeat just to have the chance to take a bar exam, even if they were going to fail it, and the opportunity to earn their living doing what you do. So the time that you spend in prayer or meditation or using the paraliminals uh, on a daily basis becomes critically important, and it doesn't take long, 20 to 30 minutes a day. This serves the function of centering and focusing your work. And I really like spending that time right before you study or right after you've exercised, take a few minutes and just focus, center, pray, start a paraliminal, and then begin your studies. That's an ideal circumstance from my standpoint. So three things that are not substantively related to studying for the bar at all, exercise, volunteer, prayer, and meditation. Those three things I think will do an incredible amount to make your studies more effective. And when you sit down to do the work, no matter what course you're in or how you're studying, it'll make you more effective, it'll help you learn more, keep more of that information, and be able to use it on the bar exam. 
And I've seen that happen over and over again. I know it works. I've seen it work in my own life and I've seen it work for literally hundreds of other students. And I'm confident it can make a difference for you over the next 78 days or so. So I hope that helps. If you're a student in our course, keep moving along. We're glad to have you uh, doing this and check out the paraliminals and the meditation. If you're not in our course and you'd like to know more about this approach and philosophy, uh, check out uh, the page or the links below and we'll tell you more about what we're doing at Celebration Bar Review to help people like you make the next bar exam their last bar exam. Thanks so much and uh, we'll see you again next week.